here at the March for Our Lives in Washington, D.C., where we're watching history being made right now. Joining me now is MSNBC's Tremaine Lee. He's standing with Representative Ted Deutsch, Democratic congressman from Florida. Uh, go, Tremaine. That's right, Joy. Uh, Congressman, yeah. I can imagine this is a, a very proud moment for you. So many people have come to, to stand up with your constituents. Uh, but for you, what does this moment mean, and what do you hope comes of this? Well, it's been a little more than five weeks since 17 people were slaughtered at Stoneman Douglas High School. And since that time, the student survivors have stood up and said, we don't want to take this anymore. No student should have to, have to suffer what we've endured. And no one in this country should continue to live under the threat of gun violence day after day after day. That's what started this. And now you've seen this remarkable response from students all across the country. It's incredibly powerful. And I'm so proud of these students. Do you have faith that this generation can do what uh, generations previous haven't been able to do? Oh, I know. Yeah, I know that they're going to. This is a this is now a defining issue for this generation. This is turning a lot of students into political activists, and they're not going to rest until they succeed, and we change the laws to help keep the community safe. Thank you very much, Congressman. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Thank thanks you. very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. There you go, Joy. All right. Thank you very much to MSNBC's Tremaine Lee and Congressman Ted Deutsch. Thank you, man. We'll be back with you a little later. And joining me now are Karine Jean-Pierre of MoveOn.org, MSNBC political contributor Jason Johnson, and NBC White House correspondent Jeff Bennett. Guys, I'm going to start with you, Jeff. Uh, we've got a statement now. That's right. Uh, the White House has heard this. Uh, they have seen this, obviously. This is a message right to them, and this is the statement we got. It says, uh, from Deputy Press Secretary Lindsey Walters via the pool, we, have a, we applaud the many courageous young Americans exercising their First Amendment rights today. Keeping our children safe is a top priority of the president's, which is why he urged Congress to pass the Fix Nicks and Stop School Violence Acts and sign them into law. Additionally, on Friday, the Department of Justice issued the rule to ban bump stocks following through the president's commitment to ban devices and turn legal weapons into illegal machine guns. What do you make of the fact that the White House whipped out this statement from the deputy press secretary? They whipped out this statement after the president himself was dispatched to uh, Trump golf course, his private golf course there. So we won't see any tweets from him for at least the next few hours. But look, the, the, the two initiatives that the White House points to fall far short of what the students from Parkland have called right. for and what the president himself initially said he supported. Remember, he said he supported comprehensive background checks. He supported raising the age by which certain people uh, could buy uh, assault weapons. That all changed after the NRA got a hold of the president in a, in a private meeting. And then the White House came out in support of a, a range of initiatives that all fall right in line with what the NRA right. backs. Right, absolutely. And, you know, we saw, Corrine, uh, some modest gun reform uh, provisions in this omnibus bill uh, that the president got rolled on <laughs> totally. uh, by, uh, by, by Chuck and Nancy, right? <laughs> um, but do you sense that Republican members of Congress understand the threat at their door, that these are young people who can vote. Something substantially has changed. They aren't showing it yet, but do you see that coming? Uh, well, I hope so. I think what needs to happen is for many years, um, this the, the gun control issue hasn't been an electoral issue. Yeah. Right? It has been. We care about it. We want common sense gun laws, meaning Democrats, and we've, we've talked about it. But now what is going to happen, we need to change that equation and make it and turn it into an electoral process. Yeah. And that's what we'll hopefully we'll see and what these students are talking about come November. They're saying, hey, we're going to be old enough to vote. Yeah. They've been saying this come November. They have. And I think that's when we're going to see the action because right now NRA, they're in the back pocket yep. of the NOA and they're just not going to do anything. And, you know, it's interesting, um, you know, Jason, we've had this conversation about the Parkland students right. having this special resonance because they're relatable to right. the average American uh, <laughs> sort of right, kitchen right. table. But you've had members of the Parkland massive, some of the students themselves, say, yes. wait a minute. Yes. You had David Hall come out and say 25% of our school is black. Exactly. And it's the media that's ignoring those students. Right. This is an intersectional movement the media may not be catching up with. The, the media may not be catching up with it. The White House certainly hasn't caught up. Clearly with. not. I see a lot of working class white people out here. Okay? Yes. This is, this is all of America is concerned about this kind of issue. Yes. And I like the fact that these young people have also said, look, there's kids talking about Black Lives Matter too. There's kids talking about gun violence in Chicago and in Detroit. So I don't think the Republicans realize this. They will realize it this fall yeah. because no one wants to get shot and they're tired of lip service from the White House and members of Congress. Yeah, give me this a uh, read from Capitol Hill. Our Republican members are members that, you know, they're not here maybe this weekend. Do they get that this is a movement they cannot stop? 
They certainly get it, but the, the question I keep coming back to is, the NRA has members dispatched in every state, millions of members all across the country. And in many ways, this is an asymmetrical fight because Republicans, as you know, are far more animated on this single issue of gun rights than our Democrats. At least that was the case well, they were. until now. They were. They were. So if, if this this yeah. could be the tipping like point. And, and as, as is the case with many crucial movements, the march or the rally is just the physical representation That's of right. all the behind can the I, scenes can I, work. Can I yeah. just add, and what we're seeing now, for the first time in decades that the NRA is underwater yes, in polling, which absolutely. Is we've not seen before. Yeah. You can't overlook the fact that it's Florida. It's a swing state. Yeah, it's a like yes. If this had happened in a blue, exactly blue state, right. not, yep. have a different conversation. A swing state that's been run by the NRA this right. entire time. It's a Kareem, test state. Test absolutely. Yep. Kareem Jean-Pierre, Jason Johnson, Jeff Bennett, we're going to have you guys back in the next hour. Thank you very much. We are live.